Here we're going to be looking at the sales of goods or merchandise that are sold between affiliated companies that have to file consolidated financial statements. And we're going to look at the accounting that we have to do for this consolidation. So for example here, uh, Corporation S or a subsidiary of Corporation P, Corporation S is going to sell goods here to Corporation P. And not all those goods have, would have been sold at the end of the period or at the, end, at the consolidation date. So we have to account for that. So what, we're, what we have here is we have intercompany goods here from Corporation S were transferred to the purchasing company here, Corporation P, and unsold goods remain in Corporation P's ending inventory for the year-end consolidation. So not all goods here transferred from Corporation S to Corporation P have been sold. So we have uh, special accounting that has to be accounted for those uh, those sales here with that remaining inventory. And what we have to do is uh, the intercompany sales and any related company debt do the these sales have to be eliminated for the consolidation. Okay, now looking at an example here using a flow diagram. The Corporation S here had sales of $200,000 that they sold here to Corporation P. So the sales here from Corporation S moved into Corporation P's inventory account here for $200,000. Now Corporation S's sales, they took that out of inventory here, $160,000, and they transferred that into cost of goods sold for $160,000. So the cost of goods sold for these uh, this $200,000 worth of sales was $160,000. Now looking at this inventory account here for Corporation P. Uh, they had sold $120,000 worth of the uh, sales or the uh, purchases they made here from uh, the subcorporation. So the $120,000 here in inventory flows into the cost of goods, sa uh, goods sold for these outside sales. They sold th that to an outside party for $120,000. And then the total sales here was for $100,000. $180,000 for the sold to the outside parties. So going back to our inventory account here, only $120,000 worth of the $200,000 worth of goods purchased here from the subcorporation S uh, were sold. So we have a remaining inventory here of $80,000 and that is what we have to focus on to account for in this consolidation. We also have uh, the payment that was made for those sales here. So uh, we have an accounts payable here for the Corporation P for $200,000 worth of the sales or purchases they made from the subsidiary corporation and they only paid $150,000 on, uh, on those uh, purchases they made from the subsidiary corporation. So $50,000 remains as in accounts payable here. And then uh, for the subsidiary corporation, they had accounts receivable for those sales here. And that remaining amount here would be $50,000 that they um, still are owed here on those sales. So what we have to do is we have to uh, take a uh, take this intercompany sales and the related intercompany debt, that's the accounts payable and the accounts receivable here, uh, do on these sales and they have to be eliminated for this consolidation. Okay, next for our calculations and our eliminations. Uh, any intercompany sales and related profit on those sales must be eliminated to avoid any double accounting in this consolidation. So the first thing we have to concentrate on is this cost of goods sold here to the outside parties and that was $120,000 worth and that represents the portion of sales here that the subsidiary sold to the parent company. They sold $200,000 worth but only $120,000 was sold to the outside parties. So we have to determine what profit was included in this $120,000 to the outside parties and that would be the sub, sub S corporation or corporation S's profit. So first going down here and looking at our calculations. So corporations S or sub corporations profit on those sales to the corporation P or the parent corporation was the sales of $200,000 to the parent here less the cost of goods sold on those sales 160000 profit of 40,000 on those sales. And then the gross profit here would be the $40,000 worth of profit divided by the $200,000 worth of sales. And that gives us a gross profit percent here of 20%. So going up here and looking at our calculation here. So Corporation P sold $180,000 here to the outside parties. And $24,000 of that, of those sales here was included Corporation S's or the subcorporation's profit here. And that's 
calculated as follows here. So we had sales of $120,000 uh, to the outside parties here. That would have been the Corporation S's portion of those sales here. And the cost of goods sold on those sales we calculated here to be $96,000. And that was based on the fact here that our profit on those sales here of $120,000 using our uh, profit ratio here of 20% gave us a $24,000 worth of profit here. So just backing this out here to $24,000 worth of profit uh, less the sales here of 120,000 gives us a cost of goods sold here of $96,000. Okay, next for elimination entries, our intercompany subsidiary sales here to Corporation P would be debited for $200,000, and then the associated cost in goods sold here would be credited for $160,000. And then we have the cost of goods sold here to the outside sources that would also be credited here for $24,000, and that was the inner company a profit here included in those cost of goods sold of Corporation P to the outside parties and that was a realized profit here of $24,000 and then we would uh, credit the inventory account here for a Corporation P or the parent Corporation P for $16,000 and that was the unrealized profit of $16,000 on those uh, say on those purchases here so uh, that was calculated the $16,000 here for the unrealized profit or this inventory credit account was calculated as follows. So we have an intercompany profit here remaining in the Corporation P's ending inventory and this should be reduced by eight, the uh, ending balance here $80,000 times 20% or that was the profit ratio on those sales and that would equal $16,000. So 60% 60 of the original inventory or 60% times $200,000 here or $120,000 that was sold to the outside. So only the profit profit on these sales has been realized. That would have been 20% times $120,000 and that was the $24,000 here of uh, sales uh, for Corporation P to the outside. That was the realized profit and, and that would go against the cost of goods sold here uh, to the parent and then the unrealized portion of $16,000 that goes against the inventory account here for the parent. Okay, in summary, we removed any of the intercompany sales and the associated cost of goods sold on those sales and also the uh, inner company profit on those sales of $24,000. But what remained here is a $16,000 worth of unrealized profit and that was uh, credited to the inventory account because no profit can be recognized until the profit is realized to a sale by the outside party since uh, there was uh, not all the uh, inventory was sold or there was $80,000 remaining. It included here an unrealized profit of $16,000. Okay, now for our consolidated worksheet adjustments. First looking at our expanded entry here for the sales and the cost of goods sold for the sales. So first we eliminate the inner company sales here, assuming that all the goods have been resold here. So we would go and we debit our sales account for $200,000 and then we'd credit the $200,000 here to cost of goods sold. Now that included this total amount here in our expanded entry. And next we have to adjust for those goods still remaining in inventory here and that's that 16 thousand dollars worth. So we'd uh, credit our inventory account here for sixteen thousand dollars and then we debit our cost of goods sold here for sixteen thousand dollars. Okay, to eliminate our intercompany debt, we'd credit accounts receivable for fifty thousand dollars and we'd debit accounts payable here for fifty thousand dollars. Okay, for the income distribution, if a subcorporation gets 150,000 internally generated, adjusted down here for the unrealized profit of 16,000, gives us 134,000. 20% of that would be uh, $26,800. And then the parents, portion here would be the internally generated amount for 200,000 plus 80 percent here of the subsidiaries adjusted income of 107,000 gives us a total controlling interest here of $307,000.